Documentary editing style has been dominating the space for a really long time. And every video editor who is capable of that style is more in demand. So in today's video we're gonna be breaking down that Mr. Beast animation to show you the core techniques behind the documentary editing approach. Just have a look. So after learning the methods from this tutorial, your edits will look more polished and you're gonna have another style under your belt. And just wait for the moment when we're spicing up the animation because this is gonna be a game changer. That being said, let's get straight into Adobe After Effects. Alright, so we're back in software here, you get the comp settings, 1920 by 1080 And today for the first time in history, we're gonna be working with 15 frames per second. So we're not gonna be using posterized time, we're just gonna set the comp like that. Let's hit OK. And generally speaking, we got some assets over here, so if you wanna follow along, then you can find them in the description. I'm gonna Gonna drag Mr. Beast onto the timeline and definitely I'm gonna scale him down. Something like that should do and right off the bat I'm gonna add tint effect to this. Alright, pretty cool. And then we're gonna right click and pre-compose. We can rename to Mr. Beast and I'm gonna make sure to move all attributes into the new comp. Let's hit OK. Alright, so for starters I'm gonna support myself with pre-edit pack and you don't really need it, you can use regular solids, that's gonna be fine as well. But I just wanna spice it up a bit more. So we're gonna go to animated backgrounds and I'm gonna go to Jitter. And we're gonna go to HD since this is a full HD comp. And I'm gonna take number one and number three. So for now, I'm gonna delete number three. It's gonna stay here in the project panel. And as for this, I'm gonna rotate it by 90 degrees. And what I'm gonna do is just find a sweet spot where it looks pretty cool. I actually really like that frame. So what I'm gonna do is right click, go to time, and we're gonna freeze frame. So that way it's gonna stay on this and we're gonna use it as a background. And by the way, instead of that, you can just use black solid over here. Just pick black and hit OK. So what I'm gonna do next is add exposure effect and I'm gonna decrease it a bit, just like that. So Mr. Beast is standing out more. And what you wanna do next is just duplicate the layer and we're gonna add invert effect to the first one over here. You can't really see that, but if we disable the layer, we're gonna have the white background. And in order to achieve that white background, you can just pick white solid over here. We can rename it for clarity. I'm gonna rename it to white BG and then I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna rename it to black BG. All right, so now let's go ahead and drag Mr. Beast over here and then we can create a keyframe for position. I'm gonna go to the beginning and I'm gonna slide him in from the bottom of the screen. Let's select both keyframes, hit F9 and now go to the graph editor. Here what you wanna do is just create a peak on the left. So we got a nice slide in effect and also it's already looking fantastic just because of 15 frames per second. All right, so what you wanna do next is select our black background and go over here, press and go to the ellipse tool. All right, now I'm just gonna create something like that. I'm gonna hold shift. And with that circle, I'm gonna double click it. I'm gonna put it somewhere here. We might make the circle a little bit bigger. And then the goal is to grow the circle together with the Mr. Beast sliding in. So what I'm gonna do is just go over to the mask. I'm gonna keyframe mask path. I'm gonna go back. Let's double click the mask and we're gonna just squeeze it in. Then I'm gonna drag it lower and we're gonna have that effect. So now we need to match the movement with the keyframes over here. So I'm just gonna make sure it's aligned, both of these. I'm gonna select, hit F9. And you know what? We can actually read the values for that graph and I'm gonna paste it over here. Okay, pretty cool. I really like that expanding movement. So once we got this, we need to head over to the project panel and we need to grab $100 bill. I'm gonna drop it in between these two layers and I'm gonna scale it up. I feel like the money represents Mr. Beast pretty good since he's giving away so much in his episodes. Matching the vibe. Okay, so since we got the movement for Mr. Beast, we also need it for our $100 bill. So what I'm gonna do is add CC page turn effect and I'm gonna make sure to keyframe fault position and we can actually sell out the layer for now. I'm gonna hit you and I'm gonna fully roll it out like that. And then I'm gonna go to the beginning and we're just gonna drag it across the screen like that. Okay, so we're gonna have such an effect, pretty cool. Let's see the keyframes, we're gonna align it. We might apply the same graph as before. Let's unsell out the layer and that's what we have. And now I kinda wanna control everything with only one layer. So I'm gonna right click, go to new, no object. We're gonna rename it to controller. And what you wanna do is select all the layers below and we're gonna parent them to the controller. We can change the color for clarity. And now we're gonna create a little movement following Mr. Beast. So I'm gonna actually hit you here. I'm gonna align the playback with that keyframe and I'm gonna create a keyframe for position in our controller. Let's go back. All right, so with Y, I'm gonna drag it a bit lower. And as you can notice, we got some empty area over here. 
so we need to fix it. So in order to do so, I'm gonna go to the black background, I'm gonna hold control and go to white background, actually select it, and I'm gonna hit S and we're gonna bump it up a bit. Okay, not bad. Now we need to match the keyframes like before, so make sure they are aligned and then apply the same graph. Alright, pretty cool. I'm even thinking about going a bit upwards, just like that. And this should be better, yeah. Okay, let's hit U, and over here when the movement stops, we're gonna create another movement. But we also need to keyframe some other values. So for example, I'm gonna keyframe scale in Mr. Beast, like that. We might also wanna keyframe position. Then in controller, we're also gonna keyframe scale. And when it comes to the $100 bill and also the black background, we're gonna keyframe position. Okay, now I'm gonna move forward, like that. And now what you wanna do is move the bill of the screen, like that. Then we're gonna take the black background, I'm gonna also move it to the right. And then Mr. Beast is gonna be scaled down, and with position we're gonna put him somewhere in the middle, like that. And then with the help of scale we're gonna zoom in, and now I'm just gonna fix Mr. Beast just a bit, and this seems good to me. Okay, so let's fix the graphs. So I'm gonna select all the values over here, then hold shift, select these ones as well, and I'm gonna hit F9. Now I'm gonna apply the mid graph, and if you go to the graph editor, you just wanna create a peak in the middle for everything. Okay, looks pretty good. Way better than before. Alright, our next step would be adding Mr. Beast handle over here when we're transitioning into that scene. So what you could do is just grab the rectangle tool and create a shape, then add the name. But I'm gonna make it easier for myself and I'm gonna use motion essence. So what I'm gonna do is just open it up, go to social media, and I'm gonna grab IG handle. Okay, so that's how it's gonna look. All we need to do is just go into the layer and I'm gonna change the name to Mr. Beast over here. All right, let's go back. And now we need to make sure to attach that handle to our controller. So I'm gonna put it below and I'm gonna parent it with a parenting link. So now it's gonna follow the camera, but we need to make sure to put it in the right position. So I'm gonna scale it down a bit and put it over here and probably the timing is off. Okay, let's time it better. Okay, so this is pretty good, but I got a feeling like Mr. Beast should be a bit more towards the right. So I'm gonna hit U for Mr. Beast, and here in position, I'm gonna drag him to the right. All right, so this is gonna be divided into three parts. So basically, this is our first scene, then we're transitioning into that, and we need one more. So what I'm gonna do is make sure to go to the controller, I'm gonna hit P, and around this time, we're gonna create a keyframe for position. Once the handle has loaded fully, we're gonna move over to the middle. So we're gonna go like that, and we might also apply mid graph. Okay, here we got Mr. Beast. What I'm gonna do though, is just adjust the ending of the animation. So I'm gonna go to frame, hit T, and I'm just gonna bring it a bit closer. So once we got this, we can actually move these two keyframes backwards a bit. Timing's perfect. And then we're gonna scale up Mr. Beast. So I'm gonna click on the layer, hit you, and over here I'm gonna align the playback. I'm gonna create a keyframe for scale. I'm gonna go here and we're gonna bump it up. Okay, pretty much perfect. I'm gonna select, apply the mid graph again. Pretty good. I'm gonna probably just make it a bit later. Should be perfect. Yeah. And now since Mr. Beast's net worth is $1 billion, we're gonna just put it behind him. So I'm gonna grab the type tool, and now I'm gonna type in the dollar sign. I'm gonna add one comma zero zero zero. A few hours later, zero zero zero, and we're good. Okay, so now we're gonna put it right behind Mr. Beast, and somewhere here should be fine. Now what I'm gonna do is make sure this is also attached to the controller, and we're gonna have something like that. I'm gonna make sure to change it into a darker version of green. Let's hit okay. And we're gonna start the text when the movement occurs around this time, maybe even earlier. All right, and for this, we're gonna use a text animation. You can use anything you want. I'm gonna go with something from Motion Boost, which is gonna be Smooth Up. This is actually perfectly matching the vibe. And now what you wanna do is transition the white background into the black one. So I'm gonna do it with the help of Blend with Original in Invert Effect. So I'm gonna keyframe, move forward and change it to 100%. Okay, now we're gonna work on the timing a bit. Pretty much perfect. In case if you're not using the invert effect, you can always go with the fill. You just keyframe the desired color and then you transition that color into another one with another keyframe. All right, so now we might start spicing it up. So I'm gonna go to our $1 billion and I'm gonna add CC light sweep. And what you wanna do is basically change the shape to smooth and then bump up the sweep intensity. 
and we're gonna expand width. Okay, something like that might do. I'm gonna decrease edge thickness to zero and we should be good. And by the way, for the movement, we can add the camera shake. So I'm gonna go to the positioning controller. I'm gonna alt click the stopwatch and I'll type in wiggle and in brackets 1,8. Let's click away. And this is gonna give us a subtle camera shake as you can notice at the end. It's the most visible over here. All right, next thing would be adding some adjustment layers. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna rename to halftone. This is not necessary, but I'm gonna add halftone effect from Boris FX. And what I'm gonna do here is change the color scheme to RGB and we're gonna change the HD scale to three. This is a nice extra touch. Now I'm gonna create another adjustment layer and I'm gonna call it curves. Let's add the effect. And what we're gonna do is decrease the shadows and we're gonna keep the midtones on the line, just like that. Now we're gonna create another adjustment layer and this is gonna be called vignette. I'm gonna add CC vignette to this. And then we're gonna create another one. And this is gonna be called radial blur. I'm gonna add radial blur effect to this. And what we're gonna do is make sure this layer is selected and I'm gonna go to the ellipse tool and I'm gonna double click. Now I'm gonna invert the mask and I will open it up. And what we wanna do is just feather it out and probably play around with the expansion. And also I feel like it's too intense, so I'm gonna change the amount to five. Okay, this is too intense here, so we're gonna fix the mask feather. And by the way, our background is too bright, so we're gonna head over to the white BG and I'm just gonna replace the effects. So that way it's gonna give us a gloomy look. And something I'm thinking about is adding drop shadow to these layers. So you can go to our one dollar bill and you can just add drop shadow effect to this and play around with the values. But instead of that, I'm gonna use Shadow Studio. This is a paid plugin, which is pretty cool. And this is giving you a nice realistic shadow. So I'm gonna copy this effect, probably paste it to Mr. Beast as well. And yeah, he's gonna look better over here. I got a dilemma, I don't know if it's too dark. We might go to the white background, I'm gonna fix the exposure a bit. Yeah, probably something like that is gonna be better. Yeah, I like it more. And remember, we picked two backgrounds from Pro Edit Pack, so this time I'm gonna drop it here. Probably, maybe right below the vignette. I'm gonna rotate by 90 degrees. And what I'm gonna do is go to Modes and I'll change it to Screen. So this is gonna give us these little dots, stripes, whatever it is, and just giving us that moody vibe. I'm gonna probably just decrease the opacity a bit. So I'm gonna go here and change it to 50%. A nice extra touch. And also what you could do is create another adjustment layer and I'm gonna call it Lumetri Color. Let's add the effect. And here in Color Wheels, what I like to do is just have the shadows going towards the blues. Actually for Mr. Beast Green would be a good idea to symbolize money, but that bluish color is looking way better, in my humble opinion. Okay, so before and after. And honestly, I'm gonna go back to the vignette and I'm gonna probably bump up the amount a bit. Yeah. That documentary style is looking absolutely fantastic when it doesn't have any motion blur, but I just kinda wanna check out how it would look if we added it. So I'm gonna turn it on here and let's see the magic. Hmm, big dilemma. Bro, I don't know what's better at this point. Hmm. All right, I figured it out. I'm only gonna leave motion blur for the handle. So let's turn it on. And then we're also gonna add it to the text. I kinda like when Mr. Beast doesn't have motion blur. It looks way more crispy. All right, we're gonna leave it at that. Hopefully you enjoyed the tutorial. Make sure to subscribe, check out the video on the screen and I will see you in the next one. Cheers guys.